uh, Czechs are not that type of nation uh, leaving and, and traveling intensively looking for, for new job opportunities but uh, appreciating that Britain was one of only three countries which opened labor market from the very first day. Uh, there, there is a Czech community in Britain, small number, 25, 28,000 people compared to some other nation, nationalities. But uh, uh, people enjoyed it and they came to Britain rather to learn and earn and, and later return. I think possibly today there are going to be a lot of issues raised by women who are in business that we very much hope that the Commission will actually address. It's not a case of a long wish list, it is a case of there are certain things that are needed and we feel that the Commission, European Commission, could provide because it's not some expensive item, it's not some um, large item. Uh, it, it is more friendly support, it's more... M women like to be able to network. You will find, I know, that there's plenty of male networks, but a women's network is much closer because women will share much more readily than men will. And we do desperately need a network for women that can support women in business, or those women who would like to go into business, because it's not just, you know, cut and dried. I do think there's still discrimination against women. I mean, we only have to look at the pay gap in this country. Women still earn less than men, and that can't be justified. Um, I think there have been huge steps to try and deal with this, but there's still a lot more to do. Well, there are three examples. The tsunami disaster, New Orleans, and the Lebanon crisis. When citizens from, say, this country, or Italy or France, uh, didn't realize that they could be airlifted or taken on a ship or by helicopter back to, say, Cyprus, was the case with Lebanon. Uh, Article 20 of the European Union um, will enshrine the right for consular protection and rescue by any EU facility, whether it's in France or Germany or wherever. So I think um, we'll see once the Lisbon Treaty goes through, if it goes through, that um, Article 20 will simply mean that new citizens will have better protection and a stated level of protection wherever he or she travels outside the EU. So it's quite important, and I think we'll see it soon in British passports, that Article 20 will be found on page 2 or 3 of the British passport and every other passport. It's quite important that citizens realise they have rights and they have protection, and that's what will happen with this new level of consular and diplomatic protection. We were the first one to, to, to ratify the treaty with almost unanimity at the Parliament. And in, we joined the European Union in 2004. And since then, the Hungarians had no, no uh, problems with, the, with, with, with liking the European Union. I think it's very, very uh, advantageous and also very, very good for the, the smaller countries. We are now one of, uh, with, jointly with Sweden, one of two countries which didn't ratify uh, the Lisbon Treaty yet, leaving Ireland aside. Uh, but this very much depends because ratification will happen in, in the Parliament. Uh, so now this really depends on politicians rather than on, uh, on the popular vote. Uh, in general, I think no, the support for European Union is very strong. Well, I wouldn't try to guess. I wouldn't dare to guess how would referendum go in our case. If you look at many of the reforms that it contains, a large number of them were contained in the long list of reforms that were contained in the constitutional treaty beforehand. So there, there, is, there is an overlap, absolutely. And some people have said, oh, it's, it's as high as 90%, so it's the same. Well, no, 90% isn't the same as 100%. Human beings and mice are 90% identical in their genetic makeup, their DNA. But the 10% the difference is, is rather important. Well, it, of course, it's not so easy when you've got such a massive anti-Europe press, more so than in other countries in the EU. But the only way we can do it is to promote it and to have sort of presentations and let people know what it's all about. Because people don't understand Europe because of the press, and uh, that's our job is to counteract the press. So we're taking on the Daily Mail, <laughs> which is not an easy job to do. 
some people, possibly some here today, think that it's my job to shift people from the hate Europe to the love Europe camp. And if any of you have ideas on how to do that, please let me know. I'd like to ask the most passionate supporters of the EU whether they've had any luck, particularly the British students here, in persuading their family and other friends that that's the right approach and that they've got their family to sign up to the glories of the Brussels institution. If so, let me know your secret or perhaps come and work for me. My time, I suspect, will be better spent on getting the EU to deliver the policies which benefit Britons and also other Europeans. We should be rational and clear. We like some European policies, we don't like others, and we will work to change them. Britain, of course, is renowned for having its adversarial system of politics, with government and opposition, usually single-party majorities, the shape of the House of Commons, you face each other two sword lengths apart. And many, many issues become highly partisan in that way, and oppositions feel that they're obliged to oppose anything the government does.